Greetings friends, it's Zara, back with another video. Today we'll be celebrating our 1,000 subscriber mark, so be sure to buckle in, hold on tight, and let's roll that intro. <laughs> like I've got a 4K intro video. <laughs> Alright, today is a big day, gentlemen. We are celebrating 1,000 subscribers. Now I know, I know, to some of you that may not seem like a lot, but to this simple old country boy, I absolutely cannot believe 1,000 subscribers has come and gone. I've been at this consistently for about three, three and a half months. And actually, I've been doing all these videos kind of by the seat of my pants. The production value is about to increase greatly because I was going all over the country traveling. I've been in Nigeria for three weeks this past month and just been all over the place celebrating holidays, seeing family, visiting people. And, you know, sure enough, everybody after we got married and our family decided to get married then, so we are all over the place doing weddings and stuff. We're actually having to turn down attending a wedding uh, coming in April because my wife's going to be too far along to make that kind of travel. She's pregnant, for those of you that don't know, uh, moving on five months now. But this video is going to be about what is Zara Salty Zara? What am I the most geekiest about? Having a YouTube channel, you can be rest assured that there's going to be a lot of different content, not just classic wall related, but also other topics. So we're going to talk about some of that today. Let's go ahead and dive right into it with number five geekiest thing I get most geekiest about. Probably could have worded that a little bit better, but we're going to move right past that. Number five on my list is technology. Okay, so technology is by far and away my biggest drive for why I do YouTube because I love technology. I love getting my hands on tech. I love reviewing tech. I love testing tech. I love unboxings, peeling that plastic off of a brand new case, much like my Lee and Lee case by Der Bauer. Amazing case, by the way, that RGB is glorious. Uh, I love the Logitech 4K Brio webcam. I love G-Sync monitors with Asus. I love all kinds of stuff, microphones, headphones, just you name it, I love it, and just getting my hands on as much tech as possible is going to be amazing. That's actually something I'm looking forward to. We moved to West Texas here towards uh, late July, early August time frame. This IKEA countertop is actually going to be, I apologize for moving the camera on you, The this countertop is going to be basically graduated from being my actual physical desk to a work station. I'm going to move it turn it into a workbench and we'll start doing all kinds of testing and maybe even get my hands on some samples and start doing some tech reviews for you guys. That'll be kind of fun. It's all about growth and expansion and evolving on the platform of YouTube. You can't just stay one dimensional, you'll never grow. And on that subject, number four thing I'm most geekiest about, college football. Yes, college football, if you couldn't tell. I'm a big fan out of Arkansas and I was born and raised there. Uh, the Razorbacks haven't been doing so hot since the latter days of Bobby Petrino. Uh, we had a shot there under Brett Bielema to have a 10-win season, but we had to do it. We, we lost to, anyway, who did we lose to? Tulsa and somebody, some FCS school. It was not very good. So we, uh, we blew that, and we've just been going downhill ever since. Chad Morris, we thought, was going to be decent enough to get us three or four or five wins, maybe get us on that upward trend before we transfer to another coach, but he just proved to be a bag full of cats so we had to move on to Sam Pittman which I think is probably the best coaching hire we've had in a very 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 long time the guy did phenomenal things when he was at Arkansas he's been doing phenomenal things at Georgia he's a great recruiter we've already gotten Felipe Franks we've got Xavier Kelly from Clemson a grad transfer defensive lineman he might become an Arkansas most likely we've got you know all kinds of great aspects of other athletes, four and five star athletes that have already come to Arkansas, or planning visits to Arkansas. Malik Hornsby is another one, a big quarterback. Looking forward to that. We got Rakeem Boyd coming back. Like I said, we already picked up Felipe Franks. We could pick up Xavier Kelly from Clemson. Lots of possibilities, lots of potential. Looking forward to that. Was rooting for LSU during the Natty when I was in Nigeria. I was able to watch that on YouTube TV thanks to my Nord VPN. Be sure you check that out. Uh, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, Nord. Uh, so moving on to number three thing that I get most geekiest about, and this is going to come to no surprise, gaming. Gaming is something I get super geeky about. I love gaming. Uh, I love gaming, especially on the PC. I haven't actually been a hardcore console gamer since the days of the PlayStation 2. That's, mm, that is 
like well that's not true i did p i did play pretty hardcore on a ps3 but that was really just one or two titles i didn't really play a whole lot i played ncaa football 14 love that game uh i wish i hope to god they bring back that series and another game that i played a lot of on the ps3 was metal gear solid 4 love the metal gear solid series it's one of my favorites uh be looking forward to a video in a couple weeks about my top five favorite video games of all time and gaming started out as just a way for me and my brother to kind of just connect he was much older than me gave us a chance to bond and once you know he got to where you know a lot of his friends started expanding out and doing other things he just kept playing games with his little brother and it was amazing we have a really close relationship now because of that and we got a lot of experiences together from things like Super Mario Brothers, Super Smash, Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy VIII, Final Fantasy IX, Final Fantasy X. Kind of what I like to call the golden era of Final Fantasy. And then you've also got games that we were introduced to, like Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelist of Roses, WrestleMania 2000, you know, Metal Gear Solid we were actually in introduced to together. We played that a lot together. And of course, Grand Theft Auto III, we played a lot of time and effort into together. And then we had, of course, World of Warcraft came out in 04, and we never looked back after that. It was just Katie bar the door. And it's just been a lot of fun. But as I've gotten older, my brother's gotten more busy. He's got kids. He's got a wife. And he's got a full-time job. He doesn't really get a whole lot of time to game anymore. So I had to kind of just relieve myself of that, that opportunity to play with him. And I had to find a way to play with others, make friends with others, and kind of just build my own environment around that. And that's where streaming came in. And streaming was a lot of fun. I loved doing it. Trying to get back to where I'm doing it more consistently these days. But... Uh, so be sure to check out the links below for uh, twitch.tv slash salty Zara. We have a lot of fun there. Come check it out. And now gaming is just something that I want to share with you all. I want to share my experiences. I want to share my knowledge. I want to share my ability. I want to share just the story, the development of these of characters and how everything's going to unfold and experiencing new games like Final Fantasy Sim Remake coming out in April. Be expecting a lot of content on that. We're still going to keep doing classic wild videos on Tuesdays, but I haven't really decided if Final Fantasy is going to be a Thursday, a regular thing on Thursdays or a regular thing on Fridays. I still got to figure that out. So be sure to look forward to that. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Um, moving on to number two thing I'm most geekiest about. So, so far we've gone through technology. We've gone through gaming was number three. And of course, college football was number four. But moving on to the number two thing I am most geekiest about. And, you know, again, this one may or may not come as a surprise because there's a massive picture of Goku on a, on a canvas in my office and all my videos. And, uh, yeah, I'm a huge Dragon Ball fan. Dragon Ball is literally, or rather was literally the first show that I ever watched where my jaw literally just dropped as a kid. I remember the first episode I ever watched was the Frieza saga, the Namek saga, and Gohan had just, or excuse me, Krillin had just gotten stabbed by Frieza's second form, and Gohan just went apey on Frieza, and just unleashed a barrage of blasts, and then reached up and did a Masenko, and just blew that dude sky high. And I remember thinking, man, Gohan looks to be about my age. He is just laying the smack down on this dude. And I just, I fell in love with it. And I've been in love with it ever since. I would probably get crucified if I uh, started talking about things like power skating and other things. But uh, who knows? If you guys are interested in that kind of stuff too, we can talk about that some other time as well. Maybe I can do a video like this where I talk about like top five, you know, Dragon Ball mishaps or top five Dragon Ball villains or top five Dragon Ball moments or something like that. Who knows? Sky's the limit, right? It's a great thing about YouTube. So Dragon Ball, number two thing I'm geekiest about. The number one thing I'm most geekiest about, and this is going to probably be a shocker to most of you guys, because you don't see memorabilia of him anywhere, and that is my boy, Godzilla. I'm sorry for those of you that are King Kong fans. Don't get me wrong. I love myself a big old furry monkey, but let me tell you something. Godzilla is my boy now. Let me tell you something. I have never and will never refer to another fictional character as long as I live as my boy, okay? Godzilla and me, we go way, way, way back, okay? Like, I'd be willing to bet you that I probably was not even thought of yet when the Godzilla movie first came out back in the 50s, 
and I, 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 I just, I, I, I watched that. I, it was the American, it was the bastardized American version that I watched years ago when I was a kid, and I just fell in love with it. I was like, oh, this big monster, big dinosaur, blah, breathe fire. I just thought it was amazing. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And I fell in love with it, and I literally got my hands on every single VHS tape I could with Godzilla in it, even if he just debuted in a cameo. And all these other Japanese kaijus were the front and center of those movies. I just had to swipe it up. My favorite one, actually, to date, of the old, 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 old Godzilla movies. Honestly, I... I kind of like Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, where he has to team up with, you know, King Caesar. That one's a really good one. Godzilla vs. Biollante is really, really good. But if I really had to pick one, and this one might actually be kind of a, again, it might, you know, cause some people to kind of raise an eyebrow, but Godzilla 1984. That thing, Godzilla 1984, was the first time I, I ever watched a Godzilla movie where my jaw didn't just drop, but my eyeballs popped out of my skull. Like, I, like the first time I ever saw Godzilla, I was like... The second time I saw Godzilla... Well, not the second time I saw it, but the time I saw Godzilla in Godzilla 1984, my jaw dropped, and I'm quite certain my, my eyeballs either, like, shot out of my skull or just just kind of just melted because I literally just drooled all over myself during that movie. It was the best version of Godzilla in my opinion there's ever been. He looked amazing even to this day that model holds up. I don't know how but it does. Uh, but anyway, yeah. When Godzilla got announced that Legendaries was going to be making movies for it instead of that like horrendous you know, Matthew Broderick, Godzilla. Now, granted, you take Godzilla out of the title of that movie, and it's a great monster movie. It's actually a really good movie, the the supposed Godzilla movie back in the late 90s, but with Matthew, with Matthew Broderick. It's actually a good movie, but you, know, like, you just turn it into a generic monster movie and not call it Godzilla. you got a great movie. I think it's a great movie, other than the fact that it's just, that's not Godzilla. Um... But then I thought Legendary's first Godzilla in 14 was amazing. I thought it was. I thought the build-up, I thought the camera angles, I thought all of it was just amazing. Yes, I wanted more monster action. My God, we had a 10-year hiatus of no Godzilla whatsoever. And it was Final Wars in 04, and then we got nothing for a decade. And the next version of Godzilla we got after a 10-year break was Legendary's Godzilla. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. Tease me. Tease me for my money. I will pay you top dollar to see you. A picture of my boy but then of course you know they decided to make a monster verse out of it it's kind of hold my breath on that because we can already see some people that just don't know when to give up the Fox's X-Men universe kind of comes to mind with Dark Phoenix and Last Stand and the DCEU's misfires with movies like you know Batman v Superman and Justice League you just doesn't doesn't really work now, I wish all those franchises the best of luck, and both the DCEU and Fox had some great movies. I thought Man of Steel was really good. I thought Wonder Woman was really good. I thought Aquaman was really good. And I thought that Days of Futures Past was really good. I thought the original X-Men was pretty good. I thought that Logan was a masterpiece. So you got all these movies that are really good in these spotlight-type settings, and then you start blowing up this universe. You're thinking, oh, God. So I'm, I'm a little concerned I thought Kong was great. Uh, I actually like Kong Skull Island better than I did, you know, the 2014 Godzilla movie. And then to add even further onto that, when King of the Monsters came out, I thought King of the Monsters was, was probably on par with Godzilla 2014. We got a lot more monster action. Ghidorah looked amazing. The story actually made sense a little bit. Granted, the human characters kind of fell flat a little bit, but they did make sense to the point to, or at least the, the plot made sense to where you were like, okay, I could see that. I could see that. If giant kaijus were actually a thing, I could see this happening. I could see this. Um, and of course, the way they left it off, awesome, amazing, with the, you know, teasing of Mecha King Ghidorah. And then, of course, now we're going to have Godzilla versus Kong. I'm hoping that they're not rushing this too much. 
I feel like there should have been one more Kong movie to to lead up to Godzilla versus Kong, but obviously they're gonna bring in a third. They're gonna bring in a, a third party character, probably gonna be Mecha Godzilla. Is what I'm hearing. There's rumors going around, so sorry for that if you didn't want to hear that. I, I do apologize. <laughs> Spoiler. Uh, but anyway, that's it, boys. That's that's my that's my top five subjects and topics that I just absolutely geek out for. I could sit here and talk to you guys all day long about Godzilla. Um, I'll be doing a lot of these top fives moving forward, but this is just something I wanted to connect with you all. I wanted to talk to you guys, seeing as this is our 1,000 subscriber special. I know there's probably a lot of questions you guys have, but for, for right now, we're just going to leave it here. If you guys actually want to do something like a QA and a or something, you know, I can open up a... Uh, you, you guys just shoot me some, just just at me in the Discord. Description for the Discord is down below. Just shoot me, uh, just shoot me some some pings and ask me some questions you might want to know some answers to, and I can answer your questions in, in my next video. So be looking forward to my video coming up on Tuesday, and I'm actually going to be doing a playthrough of Final Fantasy VII. I've only got about a month until it's released, so yeah, be looking forward to that. I don't know how in the hell I'm going to squeeze a 24-hour playtime in basically well i got february to march and april so two months i got two months so yeah that's doable i can squeeze uh, about uh 24 divided by eight is, is is three so i could probably do three separate hours of playthrough footage so it won't be it won't be it won't be this the, the fastest thing in the world to watch but it'll give you guys something to do it'll give you guys a chance to hang out as for me check me out on stream i'll be streaming this week actually this entire month I'll be streaming two or three days a week this month trying to get my night elf from level 10 to level 60 so i'll be looking forward to that as always i love you guys if you like the video leave a like leave a thumbs up comment down below and also be sure to stay kind of one another and i will see you in the next video zero out